Good morning and welcome to the service of morning prayer for Wednesday the 2nd of February. It's good to be with you this morning. I'm recording on Barn Alridge Farm, our family farm, um, and uh, you're joining a service for Trinity and St. Margaret's Barry. Our service is taken from the Book of Alternative Services for the Anglican Church of Canada. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. This is a light to reveal God to the nations, and the glory of his people, Israel. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 84. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of spring, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your court is better than a thousand in my own room, and to stand at the threshold of the, of my, of the house of my God than to dwell in the, in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Rather apt, the uh, sparrow has found her house in Psalm 84, considering we can hear them up here in the barn. Our first reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 2 and reading from verse 14 to 18. Since, therefore, the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same thing, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not go to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore he had, come, he had become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be merciful, a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God. To make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people, because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading for this morning is taken from Luke chapter 2, reading from verse 22 to 40. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem and presented him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dis dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of the people of Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him, then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed 
so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage. Then, as a widow, to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to whom all were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child Jesus grew and became strong, filled with wisdom and favor, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder how many of us have a bucket list. I wonder what some of us would include on such a list. What are the things you still want to do or experience before you die? Have you thought about it? Or if you were to die today, would you feel that was okay? That you had lived a full enough life and that death would not rob you of anything? So Joseph and Mary take little Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem in order to fulfill the requirements of the Hebrew law. As their firstborn son, they are required to take him to the temple and present him to God and offer the necessary sacrifice. Now they were doing their due diligence when suddenly this man walks up to them and picks Jesus up in his arms and shouts out, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. We are told in Luke's Gospel that Mary and Joseph were amazed. I think most of us would be stunned and would want to cr grab our child back from this raving gentleman. But let's backtrack a bit so we can contextualize this elderly man's actions. Now Luke tells us that this man was called Simeon and he was a resident of Jerusalem. We are also told that he was righteous, that he lived in right relationship with God and his neighbor, and he was religiously devout. In addition, he had one wish in life, in Luke's words, to see the consolation of Israel. Yes, this was his bucket list. Not to ride a camel across the Sahara Desert, or fly a helicopter, or drive a train, or a semi, or to climb the CN Tower, or to go on the world's largest roller coaster, or to learn to skydive, or to visit every continent in the world. But rather, as a man who had witnessed the real suffering of the people of Israel of his day, he longed to see them comforted and consoled, to be given hope and a sense of relief from their suffering. So what was his comfort? His comfort from the Holy Spirit, the Spirit was that he would not see death until he had seen the Messiah. Then one day, at the prompting of the same Holy Spirit, he comes to the temple on the same day that Mary and Joseph are there with the child Jesus, and there he sees Messiah as a child. Now notice his response. Okay, God, I am good to go. Why? Because my eyes have seen your salvation. This is it, God. My bucket list is complete, and I can go. But do you notice something? Yes, his hope is expanded. All he had on his bucket list was the consolation of Israel, but in contrast, he gets to recognize that Jesus is more than that. Jesus is not only for the glory or the presence of God for Israel, but also light for revelation to the Gentiles, an important message for us to hear at Epiphany. In the Hebrew Scriptures, God's glory is always a reference to God's presence. It is the pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day to the people of Israel as they wander for 40 years through the wilderness. It's the power of God on Mount Sinai reflected in the face of Moses. It is the silent voice in the cleft of the rock to Elijah. It is the presence of God in the tabernacle and the temple. Wherever God's glory is, God is to be found. And wherever God's presence is, there is hope and consolation. But more than that, Simeon recognizes that Christ is the one who will illuminate the way to God for the Gentiles as well. That his very incarnation is a revelation of God's presence to all of humanity. The old Anglican Book of Common Prayer has a song of Simeon, known as the Dunk de Mutus, in the, in the service of evening prayer. Why is it there? Well, pre-modern Christians were rather well aware of the perils and dangers of this night, and lived lives that were short and brutish. 
but simultaneously they had a greater sense of faith as being the fulfillment of life. To know God was to be ready for death, even when one slept. One was ushered into death by the very presence, comfort and hope to be found in God through Christ. But there's something else going on here. The handling, handing off of faith to another. Simeon's consolation was in knowing that this child Jesus would become the light to the Gentiles and the sign of the presence of God to Israel. That was still to be realized, but he in faith knew what was to come. His task was simply to bear witness to that which others would know. While his consolation was in seeing Messiah, there was also consolation in knowing the fullness of what was possible in the life and ministry of Christ for Israel and all of humanity. I'm not sure what's on your bucket list, but I do hope and pray that as you journey through this epiphany season, you might experience afresh the consolation of your own soul that Christ offers. In addition, you might have a sense of a vision to see the fullness of what, might me what it might mean for others when this local community, as you participate in the ministry of this church and in this parish. What it might mean for your family as you serve them in the presence of Christ in their midst. And your place of work or learning as you bring the light of Christ to your colleagues or fellow students. In your local neighborhood as you demonstrate what it means to love your neighbor as yourself and throughout the world as you support the ministry and mission of the church to places which you might never see or experience. That this too would become your prayer. Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. Amen. We affirm our faith together in Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. We use our responsive intercessions, litany number 18, this morning. In peace we pray to you, Lord our God. We pray for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends and neighbours, and all those who are alone. For this community, our country and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any, under, any other kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. We pray for those who have requested our prayers today, and those who are on our prayer lists, and those known only to us. We pray for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the Gospel, and all who seek the truth. We pray for Andrew, our Bishop, and Rosilla, our area Bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in God's church. We pray for our own needs and those of others. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of all this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for those who have died in the peace of Christ, and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. This morning we commend to God the soul of Joe. We pray for Cheryl and for family as they mourn his passing. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon us who put their trust in you. We pray also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by the Spirit that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, you have heard the prayers of your faithful people. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Grant our requests as may be best for us, this we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, for you have sent us your salvation. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit to recognize him who is the glory of Israel and the light of all nations, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. A couple of notices. Just a reminder that we do daily devotions in the three parishes of our region, St. Margaret's Trinity and Good Shepherd. And those devotions are put together by various folk within each of those churches and coordinated through Norm Seville. Please do uh, check our website or you could contact Norm or you could contact Amy Pauley and, uh, to be included on those being sent out each and every day. Secondly, we've been given permission to go back to online, uh, to in-person worship, and so we'll be doing so this week. Our first service will be uh, this Wednesday, the second, if you're, if you're still around and you're watching this early in the morning. Um, but um, at 11 o'clock at St. Margaret's and 12.15 um, at Trinity. And then this coming Sunday, both at 10 o'clock at St. Margaret's and 10 o'clock at Trinity and 8.30 in the morning at St. Margaret's. Just a reminder of Fairstree, uh, Trinity, at, Tr on Tr at Trinity on the 13th of February at 12 o'clock via Zoom and on St. at St. Margaret's on the 28th of February at 12 o'clock both on Zoom and in person following the service. And a reminder that Shrove Tuesday is the 2nd of March and Ash Wednesday the 3rd of March. We have a couple of things planned as we go into uh, Lent and Easter um, and uh, we'll keep you posted of those things including daily devotions and a couple of uh, fun little things to do as well uh, along the way. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Again, thank you very much for joining us today at Barnell Ridge Farm. Every blessing. Amen.